report to this computer and all right. Hello, everybody. This is Apio Hunter. Welcome to Real Man Feel. Andy Grant is unable to join us this week, so it'll just be me and our guest, Joseph Culp. And I'll let you do uh, Joseph here in, uh, in a moment. If this is your first time listening, then thank you for coming. Real Men Feel is all about encouraging men to allow and express all of their emotions. But you certainly don't need to, need to be a man in order to join us. The Real Men Field broadcast is produced live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for your growth and your enjoyment. You can find show notes and more information about the Real Men Field movement at realmenfield.org. And you can come back often and feel free to add to the podcast, uh, add the podcast to your own uh, RSS feed or check it out on iTunes. You, you can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or just visit realmenfield.org slash iTunes. And you can also follow us on Twitter at RealMenFeelOrg and at Facebook.com slash RealMenFeelShow. All the links mentioned in each episode are going to be in the bottom of the show notes. So let's go ahead and get on to the show. Now, just so you guys know, this is a weekly program lasting about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, typically, comments, feedback, and participation are always welcome uh, during the live show and anytime in our Facebook group or on Twitter at Real, or at RealMenFeel.org. And uh, so let's go ahead and introduce our guest, Joseph Culp, who is here to talk about his latest project. Welcome, Joseph. We're so glad that you can join us today. Thank you, Apio. Uh, we, might, we might mention to our audience that we are indeed joining you. I am joining you from Vienna, Austria. Uh, it is uh, about 11 p.m. Um, here in Vienna. I believe it's uh, earlier for you. Um, and I'm uh, here on, on tour, and I, I'm very delighted to, to meet with you. Well, we're so great that you're able to join us, especially since you are on tour. You're in Europe. In fact, our guest last week was also joining us from Europe. She was in Stockholm, Sweden. Ah. Yeah, so. You're very international. I like <laughs> real, men feel, real men feel internationally, which is, you know, a good thing. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> right. So tell us a little bit about what took you to Europe and, and the, your, your project that you're working on. I understand it's called, it's, in, it's a new film that you recently, uh, was it now you produced it? Did you write and produce it and also act yeah. in it? Or um, it's called The uh, Real, and uh, yeah, a little bit more yeah. about Man's Group okay. and so forth. So, so here it comes. Yeah. Um, so hi everybody. So I'm Joseph Culp. I am an actor and a filmmaker and you may have seen me here and there throughout the years on TV and some movies. Um, to clue you in a little bit about who I am, I, uh, a lot of people know me from Mad Men because I played the father of Don Draper, uh, John Hamm's character uh, in the Depression era. Uh, he was uh, the, the kind of hard nosed uh, alcoholic farmer father of that character. So some people know me from that. And others uh, in the comic book world know me as the first actor to ever play the Marvel supervillain, Dr. Doom. Um, uh, now, I've been an actor and, and, and filmmaker and, and theater director for many years. And uh, recently I did complete a, a feature film and it's very related to uh, uh, Real Men Feel because it's called Welcome to the Men's Group. And it is a feature film about a modern day men's group that meets uh, once a month to sit down and talk about their feelings. And it is both uh, a dramatic feature film, it is also a comedy. It is not a satire of men's groups, but it does use comedy to, to invite us into what is very serious about men's issues today. So um, this film, is unique. It literally takes you on a two-hour journey into a men's group on one single morning in the life of that group. And the things, the conflicts, uh, the things that bubble to the surface and how it spins a bit out of control. Um, it's, a, it, it's an ensemble piece, of course. It's a men's group. So uh, all the actors um, are sort of of equal stature in the film. There's eight men including some actors that you will recognize, character actors like Timothy Bottoms, who mm -hmm. is a very uh, iconic actor from 
70s. He was in films like The Last Picture Show and The Paper Chase, a wonderful, wonderful actor. And also Stephen Tobolowski, who you would uh, definitely recognize from Californication or yeah. he's, the, he's the guy in Groundhog Day who keeps meeting Bill Murray every morning and says, watch that step. It's a doozy. That guy, uh, Ned Ryerson, I think he's called. So he's a he's a, like a beloved character actor, and, and he plays a character in my film that is uh, unlike anything you've seen. Um, the men in this film are are struggling for a kind of uh, authenticity and uh, speaking uh, the truth to each other and and about themselves. And I say struggling because that is not something that many men uh, have ever been really raised to do or trained to do. And it's something we're learning every day. And that's why I think it's appropriate that we would talk about it today mm -hmm. on Real Men Feel. Most definitely. So what was the actual inspiration behind the, these particular carriers and uh, characters as well as the film itself? You know, obviously touching a little bit on the men's groups and the whole phenomenon of men groups that have been popping up around. But was yeah. there any particular personal motivation or inspiration that came to you that would... Well, uh, I'll tell you, Apio, um, I don't think anybody would make, would make a film about a men's group unless it was pretty personal. <laughs> because it's not a high concept movie, man. It's not, uh, you know, a studio would never give me the money to make this movie unless I had hookers in it and a hitman and all the other. All the tropes that would typically go along with it, right. Yes, that you see in movies today. It's, it is not The Hangover, uh, which I thought was a very funny movie, but it's it's really goes to the heart of what I think the men's movement is all about. Now, mm -hmm. yes, it's very personal. Um, I've been associated and involved in what, what I would call the men's movement for about over, over 20 years. Um, I first came to awareness about men's work or men's consciousness work uh, through, as many men did in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, through the poet Robert Bly and his famous book, Iron John, and the conferences and, and, and meetings he was doing at that time. Uh, also the storyteller, Michael Mead, who was uh, participating with, with Bly. And he was sending out a message to men through his book that we were missing something. Mm -hmm. And what we were missing was uh, a sense of our own, uh, what shall we say, you know, authentic male energy, a connection to our real male energy, which mm -hmm. you know, has been... Uh, has been hard for us to connect to for many generations. Sure. Uh, there's reasons for that. Uh, the Industrial Revolution is one of them, which separated men from their fathers in a lot of ways. Uh, uh, certainly the wars and um, the, the existing paradigm of, of men, which is the, uh, that you have to be strong and stoic and you don't have feelings. And, and so many of our fathers and grandfathers just went into depression or suicide um, because that was the only option to express, uh, to deal with your feelings. Well, that changed, it particularly changed in the 60s and 70s with the advent of feminism. Mm -hmm. That men saw women getting in touch with their lives and their energy, and so uh, men started to do the same thing. Um, I was drawn to it because I was a man who was searching. Mm -hmm. uh, I still am. Uh, what does it mean to be a man for me? Uh, is it okay to be a sensitive man who has a lot of feelings uh, and also be strong? Uh, is there a conflict in that? Um, again, I was not raised with a lot of male mentors, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, and that was part of what Robert Bly was saying, says men have always needed mentors to become men, and we haven't really had any, many of us. Yeah. And there are holes in our, in our childhood. So, so men's groups started coming together, and I participated. I, awesome. I began to join men's groups. I found them to be rich, uh, rewarding places to be, uh, mm -hmm. supportive, nurturing, uh, safe. Uh, I could be affirmed by other men for my feelings, which is right. something... I think is really necessary because uh, me men need to be affirmed and supported by other men. And I'm just going to say that. It's yes. not enough. We can't just do it by ourselves. 
I, I, you know, I, I so agree with that. In fact, one of the reasons why I became involved with Real Men Fuel and the whole men's movement myself was for precisely that. I, saw, I was having similar observations, similar experiences, where I was seeing how you know, men were really being given a, a, a short stick, if you will. You know, I, I grew up in a bicultural household where on one side, my dad's side of the family came from the traditional, um, I guess you could say Northern European uh, stock which was you know, kind of cold, aloof, you know, men don't get, you know, get emotionally close to their children. Um, and then, you no, know, the Latin side, my mom being from Brazil with the Portuguese ancestry, mm. you know, was very, mm. very mm. Warm, embracing in that culture. Uh, I was exposed wow. to both. And yet, even then, there was that component of the, that missing closeness with yeah. the other men, most especially with those father figures in our lives. Yeah, yeah. So how often do we see that theme popping up, you know, of, of the men seeking that closeness with other men, this, hopefully somebody who can not, not necessarily replace, but certainly represent that male, the, the male authority figure, if you will, that has been missing. Uh, you know, having a male mentor and several actually is, mm -hmm. uh, something that again many writers have said listen that was this is something that is ancient it's not new mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. men need Bly always said men need the intervention of other men to become uh fully grown men uh, women in some ways mature because of their physical reasons they mature mm -hmm. and they always have had culturally more or less women around them to kind of help them men uh, without fathers without uncles without uh uh even 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 people in the workplace to say i see you mm -hmm. i recognize you and i'm holding you uh, i i value you and i also hold you accountable you know this is uh really powerful and every young man needs it i really yeah. believe that and yeah. without it there's a hole there's a hole and you don't know if you're okay you don't know if uh you have value Mm -hmm. You don't know um, what your purpose is. It's really profound. Yeah. And in these men's groups, I feel that that is what is happening. There's a phenomenon that's mm -hmm. happening. It's like we're, we're trying to give that to each other by, by being seen and witnessed and heard. Yes. And it's simple, but it's really powerful. And it's very needed. It's very needed. And yeah. uh, I believe in it. And so... So to, to lapse forward a bit, uh, you know, I did that off and on 20 plus years and I'm still in a men's group, uh, in a couple of them. And several years ago, mm -hmm. you know, I made some films and I said, you know, I, I remember one day I was in a men's group and the level of honesty and vulnerability that was in a safe place and real support and camaraderie was so inspiring to me so moving i just thought my god you know if i could just have a camera to have gotten what i saw today i said people people would not believe it you know they would change their whole picture of what men are capable of because you know let's face it you know because of our cultural paradigms mm -hmm. stoicism all that men especially women's view of men often is that we get together to talk about, you know, to drink and talk about sex and bar, uh, sports and cars. I mean, it sounds lame, but that is the impression. Is it exactly. Not? Even we as men have that impression of when we get together. I, also expect it to an extent. Precisely. You know, yeah. it's like we, we even we expect it and we even feel obligated to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and certainly there is a place for men to have that kind of connection where we watch yeah sports and we have a drink and we relax and we there is something that is very real called the male mode of feeling and mm -hmm. it is not a feminine mode and it Oops. should not be construed as a feminine mode it is something between men that is uh and i don't mean macho either it's a no. real it's a real brotherly kind of yes love if you will or some yeah. sort of nurturing and so uh i was thinking about that and looking at it in my men's group and say, I want to do a film. Well, um, 
I'm not really a documentary filmmaker. I'm a storyteller. I, 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 I've spent my life as an actor telling stories and as a writer. And so another man in my group uh, who felt the same way, he and I started having coffee and saying, well, what about this? What could we do? How could we, how could we bring an audience into this phenomenal experience that we know is so good and do it and make it entertaining and not sell it out, not make it a stupid, you know, right. uh, joke, which is what many men fear and, and with mm -hmm. good reason. Um, but take it seriously and yet make it fun and entertaining in a way that will right. be for a wider audience. There's the key. Right. Because, because I could make a documentary for me and you and go, mm -hmm. wow, look at this. You look at my group, look at yours. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. And somebody should, should do that. And there have been some. Sure. But nobody, you know, I, I know there was an Australian film in 2008, which actually was called Men's Group. And mm -hmm. I heard it was pretty good. I actually, silly, but I haven't seen it uh, because I was deep into making this other film when I finally heard about it. It never really got beyond Australia. And I heard that it was started as more of an improvisational kind of piece. Uh, my film is a scripted film. It is a straight up, uh, mm -hmm. drama about these eight guys who get together and they sit down and they have breakfast. That's, that's their ritual. And then they sit down and they, they start to talk. And at first, uh, yeah, we thought maybe we could do it almost as a, almost like a, like a documentary, like really just focus on the men. I said, yeah, but you know, we, we're an audience. We need things to hook us in. We need to find yeah. conflict. We need to find. So, they are not, and this is, was a real big choice, they are not perfect MKP, you know, uh, evolved um, men, uh, conscious warriors, you know. They're guys who are trying to do this. They're yeah. trying to pass a talking stick and talk and respect each other, and then they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and then, that's the, the, the comedic part of it. Where, that, that yeah. things get, get a bit funny because we recognize ourselves, how we, how we stumble and make stupid mistakes and we sure. start to react and we trigger each other. And I wanted all that in the movie. And I, I, I think it it's, makes it a very a richer movie for it. Um, the result is um, we get into the issues. You know, we, we talk about uh, male shame, uh, mm -hmm. sexuality, uh, being a, a, a new father today, what that's really like, um, how that's a new shifting archetype, if you will. Yes. You know, yes. Um, we get into suicidality, um, how men are, are at, at a crossroads where they can't really express themselves, and that seems maybe like an option. They're so depressed that they yeah. want to get out of it. Um, and we pull a guy back from the edge of that, you know, and so it, the film, I won't kid anybody, it, uh, we, we've taken a little bit of heat because our trailer uh, does point up the more comedic aspects. Well, <laughs> it's a trailer, okay? Sure, yeah. And, that's and, and, You know, the trailer, you want to get people interested who have, frankly, never heard of a men's group. Right. You know what I mean? I want right. people to come to a theater or check it out on BOD and go, what, what is that? You know, that looks fun. Yeah. yeah. And then it also takes us into really the terrain, deep. really the deeper terrain. And, and let me tell you, it goes there. We don't pull it back. So guys, we say hold each other to the fire. You know, they hold That's their right. feet to the fire. They say, you know, they confront each other. They, they challenge each other. And then they also support each other. You know, when I saw the trailer, yes, I, I mean, definitely, you're right. It was definitely focused on the more comedic aspects of it. But I did... So, Catch glimpses of it's there. It's in the yeah, trail. Absolutely. Yeah. You no, know, you know, holding the feet to the fire, the accountability, the responsibility aspects of and the vulnerability, which absolutely. is really the film and, and we got a nice article in the Good Men Project, which is a wonderful online magazine about men. Uh, and they said it's a window into male vulnerability. When I I think that is a really great topic a really great idea that men are vulnerable and I, the way i say it and when i screen the film for audiences i go look men are scared you know do you think they're not do you think we're not frightened yeah 
do you really believe that we're going around going, yeah, we're, we're fine. We're all, come on, you know, we, are we going to make it? Do we know how to be a good partner? Do we know how to be a good parent? Men are always been frightened. They're always scared. The difference here is that we're, we're allowed to talk about it. Yeah. And that's breaking a big taboo. That's a huge taboo that's been broken. And, you know, it, it really depends on the culture as well. Each yeah. culture seems to have its own little taboos about, about male vulnerability, if you will. I mean, exactly. that experience in the Latin culture has been that, yes, men can be more emotional, but they overcompensate that by being hyper-focused on the machismo as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. That's so interesting. Isn't that a, a strange dichotomy? So, so they, they, they could be emotional, uh, but, but they have to compensate for like exactly. being tough guys. Exactly. Like being a tough guy, but always turning it into something about, you know, one, you know, looking at basically something sexual about women and women being yeah. an object of desire and everything else. So it's just, it, it's there a you go. dynamic, which, which exists. And, and every culture seems to have its element of that, where there are some vulnerable, other cultures permit more vulnerability. Others do not. Certainly ours in which we grew up in to what I call the Northern European um, culture is very stoic very you know reserved and and you know we see we see those those symptoms of that emotional constipation is what i call it mm. the people mm. holding back we see it popping up in terms of anger management issues the the depression the that we don't want to acknowledge suicide but more mm. so alcohol the drink the drinking yeah. exactly yeah, that's drink like that's the acceptable cultural medication, you know, yeah, you just, exactly. you know, I, I screened the film. Um, we actually, this year we, we had the film, uh, at a very big festival in Norway, Northern Norway called the Tromsø international film festival. It was a critics pick and they really as a huge audience. They really loved the film. They laughed, they, they cried, they, you know, really felt for it. And after the film, we had these discussions and, you know, many people said, they said, listen, you know, we don't really, we don't really have this here. You know, it's, you know, we're still very, uh, you know, sure there, there's mm -hmm. alcoholism groups and everything, but you know, basically we're, we got the, we keep it, we keep it hid. We go to the bar, we go fishing, we go hunting mm -hmm. and, uh, sitting together and, and talking about how you really feel is we don't really have a model for that. And so it's still coming, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I have to say that the U.S., for all of our <laughs> shadow stuff and all that, you know, I, I, God love us, you know, we're, we're, tr we, we try, we try things, you know, we do, we do. We're we're really, we're inventing and trying. And yeah. that's part of what I love about Americans. Um, uh, men's group movement, I pretty much believe started you know, in the U.S. and yeah. almost even in, in California, for that matter, more or less. Uh, Wisconsin, though, too, because right. the Mankind Project really came out of Wisconsin. Right, uh, yes. Yeah. So, and, you know, they're all actually Swedes and Norwegians, so it's kind of interesting. Something <laughs> about, and they're not known for that. <laughs> no, they're not. There's something about, uh, you know, our, uh, perhaps our entitlement to buck certain cultural or ancestral tradition. You know, that's Absolutely. part of the American imperative in a way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these groups started to form in the 70s. Warren Farrell, who's, you know, quite outspoken about men's work, uh, he, uh, he's, he started probably over 400 groups. Uh, Bill Kauth also, uh, who was Mankind Project. Many guys out there that really, you know, allowed, uh, helped this nurturing come to fruition so the film is is really you know addressing that it's trying to show that show an audience hey it, this isn't the only men's group there are many other types but mm -hmm. this is a facsimile of something a lot is packed into the movie so it's mm -hmm. like some people say now you were in a men's group is this what happens in your men's group and i said well maybe over several years let's put it right. that way. it's a movie after <laughs> all not so, in a single morning that definitely not it, and yet the movie is, <clears throat> it's not completely outrageous. It, you feel like sure. this could happen, you know, mm -hmm. this with the right type of guys and the right amount of conflict, this might actually take place. 
And oh, I'm proud of the movie together. immediately for that very reason. Because yeah. I mean, everything that popped up and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, that could so happen. Absolutely. I, I, I've seen those dynamics, again, played out over multiple you know, yeah. counters or whatever. But yes, I, I felt that connection immediately for that very reason. Yeah. Um, so what we've been doing is, is, is screening the film in, in, uh, for uh, different groups, uh, some or men's organizations, uh, also general public. We, we do uh, these events where I, I bring the film to a, a cinema somewhere and, uh, as like a preview and get an invited audience. And then we have a panel discussion to try and talk about what the film is speaking to. And that's gone very well for the last few months. And then we launched an Indiegogo crowdfund campaign, which actually just closed. I was a little sorry because I wanted to do this interview before it closed. <laughs> thinking, hey, maybe some people will, will donate more. But right. we, uh, we did raise some money. Um, why, you might ask. It's, this is an independent film. It's you know, we truly an independent film. Truly independent. I mean, we, we got enough money to make it. We got these incredible actors uh, to do it. Uh, every single one of them wanted the experience of doing this movie. And, and these are very high level performers. Um, so that was, you know, we had many, many blessings to make this film. And I will say that. Uh, but to bring a film out into the wide audience um, is a very tough deal today. You know, it's mm. like, what movies are you seeing at your general multiplex? You know, you're seeing Star Wars, Star Trek. Uh, Suicide Squad, whatever. Right. Uh, it, it's hard to get welcome to the men's group into that situation. So we will we will figure out a way to do a, a kind of a, a theatrical release, um, probably in more of your standard art house cinemas in various cities. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, you'll see it released on VOD like Netflix and uh, iTunes. Um, and then, of course, broadcast cable, like either HBO or Showtime or something like that. Sure. But before that happens, we want to keep uh, promoting the film and getting people mm -hmm. interested. So the social media campaign is really important. Absolutely. And, and speaking of, speaking of uh, you're talking about screenings and so forth. I was checking out you know, the website, and I noticed that there are some screenings up through August that were on there. Do you have other screenings that are coming up, not just in Europe, but also here in the U.S. that people can be made aware of? And how can they, how can they find out more about the film? And well, uh, if, if you're interested at all in Welcome to the Men's Group, I urge you to go to our website, which is what we do today. It's called themensgroupmovie.com. And I think it's on Real Men uh, Feel, uh, I think the link is up there somewhere. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. It's called themensgroupmovie.com. <clears throat> and there will be information there. Uh, you can see the trailer. Um, you can like us on Facebook. Uh, we're, we, we're always posting uh, announcements about what's going on with the film. And, uh, and the screenings that will be coming up. Uh, right now, I'm not sure what screenings we're doing before the end of this year. Okay. Uh, there'll be a few. Um, and, uh, but right now, you can go to the website and get information there. And, uh, and if you can, anybody, also, you can also, I must say, uh, hat in hand, if you feel like you like what you're seeing here and you want to see this film and you want to see it soon, feel free to donate something to our Excellent. website. We take uh, donations there, and we are not ashamed to do that because we are independent, and we must support uh, getting the film promoted. Absolutely, we want to shamelessly promote you as well. Thank you. <laughs> and make sure that people do know about that. Yeah. And we're just joined by Sarah, who frequently joins us every week. On, she's one of our frequent guests, and so welcome, Sarah. So nice to see you, Hi, Sarah. Hi, oh. I'm traveling, so I'm late. So. Oh no, we're okay. Okay. It's uh, no worries at all. And uh, we're almost wrapping up. But before we do, uh, Joseph, I want to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about your other work. The oh, film. Another, yeah. the, the other part of what you are truly passionate about, what, what moves you forward with, with the men's work that you do. Well, thank you. Um, I mean, in addition to, what, well, Sarah? Sarah? Oh, she's just muted out right now. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, Keeping up background I hope noise. you're still there. Uh, okay. I'm here. <laughs> okay. 
Um, and if you, you know, want to jump in by all means. questions, let me know. Uh, so the, uh, in addition to making this film, um, we're planning to do a lot more, actually. We're really planning, I uh, hope everybody sees the film as soon as possible. Um, we're also planning to, to do uh, another type of offering, which would be a series uh, about a men's group based on the film and based on these characters. So really, it's not just a one-off movie. It's a whole slew of creative uh, media projects that are about men's work, mm -hmm. uh, which of course includes, Sarah, uh, women, which is that we are, you know, this is a very, and I say this uh, without any reservation, our film is, <clears throat> is really a, fe a feminist film. And we have many, uh, the, the audience that is gonna probably drag men to see this film will be women because they want them to see a group of men who are trying to be more authentic in their, their uh, inner life. Uh, and that's a very gratifying thing. The women who, get, who see the film are very excited about it and they have told me so, and that's nice to see. Um, uh, so the projects that we're going to be doing, such as the series, will include going deeper into relationship work, uh, exploring you know what is happening there today, what are the challenges, and how men and women can you know facilitate better communication. Um, and in addition to that, um, the reason why I'm traveling in Europe right now, besides the film, is I do. I, uh, even though I've been an actor and filmmaker for many years, I also uh, co-founded a technique, which is a, uh, a body mind processing technique called walking in your shoes. And it uses uh, deep empathy to know any subject or a person uh, in a very profound way. And uh, it uses the spontaneous wisdom of the body uh, combined with movement. And um, I've been doing it for over 25 years. Uh, it's used as a, a modality for facilitating people's uh, personal growth, as well as uh, artistic creativity. Uh, it's great for actors, of course, because you're using the body and, and empathy. Uh, but it, it helps reveal things that are not completely conscious uh, to your normal, uh, rational mind. And they come from the deeper wisdom of the body. And I do this... Um, Every year I do a tour throughout Europe um, where I train people and they're working with hundreds of people all around, um, therapists, psychotherapists, social workers, uh, coaches, life coaching. Uh, people use the technique. Um, if you know anything about family constellation work, uh, that mm -hmm. is also mm -hmm. similar to walking in your shoes. It uses okay. representative perception, which is, you know, you step into a role, yes. so to speak. Yes. And you speak from the body's intelligence. So it's, uh, it's kind of a cousin of, of constellation work. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. um, so that's yeah. what I'm doing. I'm doing. Tomorrow I go to Zurich, uh, and then I go to Paris to screen the film, and then I go to uh, Hanover, Germany, and then Berlin. And so it's, uh, it's, it's inspiring to me. And it, it, I, I, as an actor, it's like, why would you do that? You know, you should just be in LA trying to, you know, be on a new series, you know? And I'm like, well, this I'm is like I, the world. <laughs> I yeah. have to do, I have to do exactly. that. And, uh, and, and people really get something from it and that gratifies mm. me. So. Absolutely. Not to mention the fact that you're having a great impact on the world by doing that. I mean, acting is wonderful and can have an impact as well, but the truly hands-on work, being able to share something that has a true impact that people can do, feel like they can relate to and do every single day. That, that thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Traction. Yeah. It really does mean something to me. It's like, you know, when people come to the workshops and they go, you know, I'm, I do walks with my clients every day. We call them walks. They're yeah. this process that we use. And, you know, to, I started doing this with, with my mentor who was a clinical psychologist and a, and a practicing Buddhist, um, you know, 20, almost 30 years ago, mm. he passed away and he was my, he was one of my great mentors and I was lucky to have him. And, uh, and I'm sort of carrying on that work that he did. And I feel good about that. You know, I feel like he's, his work lives on. So that's beautiful. That's, that's part of the mentoring stuff that we talked about that. Right. 
men need. And oh, definitely. Yeah. My yeah. son and I were just having that conversation. Yeah. Oh yeah. What were you uh, talking about? About the mentoring, and it's kind of funny because all of this is syncing together. So this is nice. I, mm -hmm. I flew up today to be with him. And anyway, yeah, so we're discussing all of this, and he's all over the place. He wants to make changes everywhere in the world. He's 21. So, oh, yeah. Um, my, son is, my son is 22. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he, he texted me and said, well, we watched the debate, and we, <laughs> me and my roommates, and we are not impressed, and we all have opinions. And I said, that is so great. Because when, I was, when I was 21, I didn't get about any <laughs> care. Because Reagan was an office. I didn't care. I didn't want to know about it. I That's mean, how I was at 21, well, too. Of course, you know. But these, I'm encouraged by what's going this on. This is a different world. These kids are saying, no, yeah. we, wanted, we want something to work here. We want something right. Definitely. Cool. And I'm very, very heartened by it. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. Man, we can have so many different conversations about that, about the new perception of fatherhood and everything else. A lot of the subjects that we talked on during this conversation, but we are out oh. of time, darn oh. it. But we would yeah. absolutely love to have you back, Joseph. Because oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. And I'd love to when, when Andy can join us again, too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to him. So I hope he's well. And uh, I'd, love, I'd love to come back and talk more about it. And, uh, we will be doing, and we just had a signal freeze up here. So shows yeah, should be back. Frozen. <laughs> that that happens occasionally when, especially while you're on the road. But we're all around the world. Exactly. But, oh, there we are. We're, we had. Yeah, I popped out. I popped out for a moment. <laughs> I hope we can talk further because uh, the, there will be a lot to talk about, especially when you get to see the film, which I hope is soon. Yes. Yes, indeed. indeed. Yeah. Left looking forward to it. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We hope to see you next week on next week's uh, episode of Real Man Feel. Unfortunately, my notes just blanked out, so I can't tell you the name of the subject of next week's episode, but for sure, yes. Let me do a short plug again. Yes, uh, please do. The film is called Welcome to the Men's Group, and you go to themensgroupmovie.com to know about it. And uh, Facebook, Welcome to the men's group. Please like us. Please, please like me. No. Uh, <laughs> we have your support. Uh, we post things every, t every day and, and cool stuff. And we're, you know, we've got people like, like Apio Hunter and Andy Grant on Real Men Feel. So we're all connected there. So. We, we Welcome are, to the men's group on Facebook. Go for it. And I would also encourage anybody who, if you are so inclined to please continue to support the film financially. Thank um, you. Thank yes. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So important. We, every dollar we get. That's Absolutely. how communities release films now, not, not studios. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We, all, we all have a piece of it now. So yeah, you, that's exactly right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Well, in that case, everybody, we will see you next week. And thanks so much for joining.